So I was talking to someone uh, recently who was at an awards ceremony, actually two awards ceremonies uh, in the same town. And at the, there's a girls' school and a boys', a boys school. So they were at the girls' school awards ceremony and it was all very, very, very systematic and well organised and all very uh, formal and the principal or vice principal or head of each department would come up and call out the, the awards then uh, pertaining to, to their various uh, areas of study. So and one of the teachers came forward and uh, called forward the uh, team captain who, uh, of course, uh, captained our team to um, an All-Ireland in Camogie. Uh, we won last year and the year before. This year uh, we came second, but uh, well done to, to Siobhan now and all of the team. And She came and got her award. And then the next one is you know, our, our equestrian team. They have an equestrian team. So our equestrian team here in the school uh, qualified, of course, for the, as, as always, for the the, the, uh, the All Ireland, and uh, and uh, Magella brought home the gold. So Magella, thank you very much. Here's your little award, and and so and young scientist of the year. You know what I mean? Uh, they came second and third, and so on and so forth. Um, and then the, the same person went to uh, the boys' school, which is actually just across the road. You know, and uh, so boys' school, everything is, it was a little more under pressure for time, I guess, and. Um, so the award here for um, attendance at school uh, goes to Johnny. Well done, Johnny. You came in most days anyway. So you have a, an atten attendance rate of 80%. So fair play to you. There's your Mars bar and, um, and, and so on. Like this, the, standard, the standard of awards was very, very the same families. Like they're from the same towns, but just very, very different standards, you know. Um, it was hilarious. The, the comparison was hilarious. Uh, but it just it got me thinking about the, the, the idea of, of, of how we see our own faith. Because generally speaking, we will measure our faith relative to those around us, you know? So if I'm, not that that could ever happen, but if, if one were to be a student, if I were to be a student at the girls' school, the standard there is going to be an awful lot higher, right? Where it's not just about attendance anymore. One has to, you know, be in the top 3% of the country kind of thing. Whereas if you're in the lads' school, just turning up, merits you an, a, a reward, you know what I mean? But like you've just turned up, you haven't done anything spectacular at all. Uh, but by their standard, by that standard, you're doing grand just by being there. But if one stands back and is able to see kind of both scenarios simultaneously, say, well, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they're working hard. They're putting in the extra time and the, the extra slog for all these extracurricular things. Whereas these guys are just barely doing the minimum. Right? But if that's your world, if that's what you're used to, then that becomes normal. In fact, you can even be patting yourself on the back for an 80% attendance rate when you're called to so much more than just turn up. So when we look at our faith, again, as, as the, the, the level of faith kind of decreases, uh, and when I say faith now, I mean a lived relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, this ascent of the intellect and the will to how God reveals himself, as, as that level starts to drop, uh, we can begin to ground and go, well, sure, look, I mean, it could be worse. I'm, I'm turning up, aren't I? I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to Mass. I mean, I've been to Mass twice this year. So I know people who haven't been to Mass in years. So if we compare ourselves to those around us, we can actually begin to think that we're, that we're, dare I say, a little better than we are, or a little better than God is actually calling us to be. Be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. He doesn't say do the bare minimum, and we'll see how you get on. He says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Why do I say this? In, in our readings today, when Jesus comes into the lives of these people, or when God enters the lives of these people, everything changes. So Abraham and, and Sarah, who have no child, uh, they're, they're visited by, an, prop, we can probably imagine that they're the three angels, angelic creatures anyway, uh, sent to them who then say that, that Abraham and Sarah will have a child this time next year and Sarah laughs and the angels say why did you laugh and she says I didn't laugh and they said oh you did this, this reminds me of school really it's just this, I, didn't, I didn't laugh at all I didn't laugh at all father uh, <laughs> ironic who read it as well anyway, but anyway. Uh, our, our most or, or the, the person in the community who gets the, the award for enjoying laughing the most. Uh, so uh, so but once, once God enters their lives and they, they accept this gift of, of the, this presence of God, you know, this, this gift of God, they will now have a child, right? Isaac, who then 
Abraham will be called to sacrifice, who he, he will not have to do it in the end, but it's a, it's a foreshadowing of, of the passion, the father who offers his son out of love, and the son who offers himself willingly out of love. But that's, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, everything changes. The, the centurion then invites the Lord into his life for his servant who's sick, and, and the servant is healed. Peter's mother-in-law, who is ill, the Lord comes in and transforms their lives. When the Lord enters our lives, it's, he, he transforms. It's not just an extra part or a kind of a bonus or a topping or something in our, in our lives, or just kind of something on the periphery which makes things look good. Like When the Lord enters our lives, especially as the level of faith is dropping, it's going to mean that we're going to be all that more different to the rest of the world. Because if the Lord enters our lives, then we, we, we will be different. Our, our, the way we speak will be different. And we've admitted, mentioned this a couple of times, but the way we act and dress and drink and socialize and our hobbies and, and what we watch on TV is all going to be different due to the presence of Jesus in our lives. Because you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't be doing everything that everyone else is doing and all these things that separate us from God, we can't be doing those and expect then that the faith just magically, I don't know, work when we are choosing to put obstacles in our lives all over the place. You know, like if you're watching, you're watching pornography or you're watching Game of Thrones, all of it has all these violent and pornographic images in your head and then you want to go pray a rosary, that's not going to work. That's not, your head's full of, full, full of obstacles to the Lord's grace. I mean, your, your memory and your mind is going to be so distracted and pulled away from God and if, if, if our weekends, if we're just longing for and planning for as much ple- pleasure as we can stuff into one night, that's, our faith cannot work. And invariably, and this has already happened, invariably we'll have to choose. Is, is, it, is it God or is it my freedom, my perceived freedom, what I think will make me happy? I, I'll have to choose. And it's going to be just an awful lot easier and the path of least resistance to choose pleasure and to choose what everybody else is doing because that's easy because you will be applauded you'll probably be more fiscally successful in business you will probably have uh, as I say the applause of friends and the admiration uh, of people doing what everyone says is wonderful and marvelous but we will lose God's favor and all these ridiculous stupid and fleeting things that will pass will mean nothing. When you're 86 years, of old, 86 years of age, diagnosed with cancer, and you've got six months left to live, and you're back over your life and say, I've wasted it. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter how many houses you have, it doesn't matter how many pools, it doesn't matter how many people you've been intimate with, it will make zero difference in that moment. You're about to leave Earth. What have you done while you were here? I give you 86 years. What did you do with him? Nah, he wouldn't phrase it that way. That's how I'd phrase it if I was God. But thankfully, I'm not God. Okay. <laughs> I give you 86 years. What did you do with them? Okay. I give you intelligence. I give you ability. I give you a certain amount of power and influence. I give you a family. I give you four wonderful kids. What did you do with them? What did you give them? Because your time is up now. You, you can't go back and relive it. You can't be a father to your newborn again. That, 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 that's, go, that's over. That time period, you can't be the father to your teenager anymore. That time period is gone. Okay? You can't relive that kind of fidelity to your wife, or you can't choose now to be faithful to your wife when you broke it 16 times over your, over your marriage. You can't choose now. Like it, 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 th- those things are done and gone and passed. Now, yes, there is forgiveness, there is mercy, yes. But again, we're called to more than just live a kind of mediocre life and, and, and get absolution and, and, and then die. You know, we're called to build things up. We're called to become saints and sanctify those around us. This is the standard we're called to, to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, to allow Christ in our lives to transform everything in us and therefore everything around us. This is what we're called to, not this mediocrity, ah, sure, we're grand, we're all going to heaven anyway, and I'm a good person. That's just rubbish. Like, that's, that's, it means nothing. Like, uh, that's such a low bar. And if, if that's the standard in, in our lives in the church, you will never be a saint, 
And you will never, ever draw anyone around you to Christ because you don't know him. So it's just not going to happen. Let's not be naive about these things. If we're not deliberately following the Lord and deliberately sanctifying our lives, sanctity won't happen by accident. If my will is not involved here, it, it, it can't be forced upon me from above. If I don't choose to follow the Lord, he can't force me to. I must choose. And what's, I think, fantastic, what I love about being a Catholic these days, is that our faith, each of you as individuals, your faith today is so incredibly important. As, as the number of people carrying lights decreases, each one of those lights becomes all the more important. Each one of those families practicing the faith and living the faith and trying to pass on the faith to the next generation, each one of those families becomes all the more important. Each one of those priests sanctifying themselves doing their best to live their, their fatherhood uh, uh, as well as they can be an example and be faithful in prayer and to the teaching of the church, whatever it costs, each one of, the, of them becomes all the more important because there are fewer of us. But kind of the, the positive, if we can call it, I think, I think we can call it a positive, is that if we start to get this right, if my faith starts to transform me from within, I will have an effect on people for all eternity. That's just mind-boggling. If I start to get this right, if, I start to, if my life becomes more holy, <laughs> more as God would wish, if I become a, a lived reflection of the mercy of God and the love of God, the compassion of God, that's going to affect other people. But then, those people who, in all humility, we affect, will affect others in turn. So if, if there's some, you've got, you've got a friend who's a girl, and she's, you can see she's going the wrong way, she's maybe 19, 20, 20 years of age, and uh, the whole partying scene is just really taking over her life, and you can see that she's, she's kind of on the fence. She's like, you know, either I kind of go headlong into this, because that's what all my friends are saying, you know, shorter skirts, lower cut tops, more whatever they're supposed to be doing. Um, if I can go headlong into that, but you, 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 know, you know where that ends. You know where that ends. It ends in regret. It ends, ends in looking into a toilet bowl. It, it, it's horrible. It's a, the, the, the actual lived consequences of that lifestyle are horrific. But she hasn't gone down that road yet. There's also a road where we have, a, we have Catholic community. We have friends who are Catholics. And they're good fun. They're wacky out and they have the loudest laughs. They're great to be with. And they give you an alternative to this Saturday night staring into a toilet. You have an alternative. There is another lifestyle. There's something else out there. And because of your fun, your joy, and your love, they decide, yeah, sure, look, we'll give this whole thing a, a shot. And then there's kind of a youth group and they meet up every Saturday and they do hikes and cinema and get-togethers and all these fun things that they do. And because of that, she doesn't go down that route. And then she brings in a couple of her own friends who did go down that route and regret it, but then still have no alternative, nothing else to do. And voila, like, you've now just saved possible uh, abortions, uh, lots of regret, all sorts of uh, pain. You've now affected people. And now they go on then to, to marry other good people in the faith and have kids who bring, they bring up in the faith and one of them becomes Pope. So, see? It's that easy. You know? So, like... But, like, you see, the, the, the effect your faith has on others, do not underestimate it. There's so much more going on here than me just getting myself into, into heaven. Like, people see us. Whether you want to or not, people see you. And you affect people. Again, with kind of whether you, whether you want to or not, you will affect people. So we have this incredible power, this influence that we can have in our hands. And we have a limited time to use it. So what do you do? Do we allow the Lord to transform our hearts now that I might be, I, that I might be a transforming influence in the lives of others and the lives of those around me? Or do I just keep the bar low and say, sure, look, at least I haven't killed anyone? What's our standard in the church? What's my, what's my, like, do I have any zeal at all for the salvation of souls? If I do, the Lord is more than on my side. He's, the, Lord is on the, my, the Lord is on the cross. And the Lord is within me. 
And so if I let him work in and through me, we become the salt of the earth and the light of the world and we change lives for all eternity. There's no greater joy, no greater privilege and no greater calling than that. And so we ask the good Lord today, through the prayers and intercession of Our Lady, that we might follow her example of faith and walk by the Lord through thick and thin and change the face of the earth. Amen.